Hey everyone, it's Colt. Today we're talking about JavaScript and how new features are added in. Why does it take so long? What are the different steps of the process? How do you find out what's changing and when it's changing? This isn't really the video I planned on releasing this week, but circumstances changed. For the second time in three weeks, I am without power at my house thanks to high fire danger and PG&E shutting my power off. So I'm recording this in my car. Hopefully it doesn't sound uh, too terrible. I have my microphone, it's just a different space. Oh, and update on my chickens at the very end, as always. Let's start by talking about who's in charge of JavaScript, what is JavaScript really? So this is review probably for a lot of you. There is an organization called ECMA International. It's a group that creates a whole bunch of standards for different technologies. They have quite the dry website. This is their website, ECMA International. And you can just see quickly, there's a bunch of different standards like acoustics and electromagnetic compatibility and electromagnetic fields, information storage, multimedia coding and communications. And one of those standards they put out, one of the specifications is for something called ECMAScript. Not a very creative name, ECMA, ECMAScript. And it's just a standardization, it's a piece of text, a document that says, this is how a programming language could work, but it is not itself a language. Then we get to JavaScript. JavaScript is a language that conforms to ECMAScript. It's an actual implementation of the language described in that document. And if we look at the document, here is the spec. You can see that it, it doesn't really include any code other than a couple of examples. It just shows how things should work. So here's how the multiplication operator should work. The star operator performs multiplication, producing the product of two operands. The sign of the result is positive if both have the same sign, negative if the operands have different signs. Multiplication of an infinity by zero results in NAN, and so on. It's just a set of textual descriptions or rules for how a language should or could work. And in order for a new feature to be added in, it must first be added to the spec, to this Bible that describes how the language should work. Then individual browsers go and update and include those features. Now, ECMA is a large organization, as we saw. They have lots of different specs and lots of different groups, and these things called technical committees, one of which is called TC39. It sounds like a shadowy government group or maybe a planet in a sci-fi novel. Captain, the ECMA shields are down on sector TC39. I repeat, TC39. And this technical committee is in charge of maintaining and evolving ECMAScript, that specification. They are a group that meets a couple times a year. It's hard to know exactly how many people are in there. Uh, it's not as shadowy as it sounds. It's a mixture of developers and academics and people who create frameworks, uh, people who develop browsers and write the JavaScript engines. They get together and they talk about new features. They listen to proposals and there is a long proposal process we're about to go into. And eventually if everything goes well, a feature will be added into the spec then browsers need to go implement it based off of those rules in the spec. Previously, there was a process, a more traditional process with releases, named releases like ES6, ES5, and so on, where features were bundled together into large chunks as a release and released all at once. The problem with this, with ES6 in particular, was that it took forever, almost six years for the latest release, even though it's just a release of an updated spec, it took a long time and some features were ready very early on and they had to wait a long time to be released and other features were not ready and there was a ton of pressure for them to hurry up so that they could be released with everything else. So after ES6, TC39 changed things up. They added in a new process where features are added to the spec on a yearly basis whenever they're ready. So this new process is every year we get a named release, ES 2016, ES 2017, and so on. They happen on an annual basis, one time per year, and the release just contains whatever features have been finalized or finished by that yearly deadline. So if a feature doesn't make ES 2025, then it's probably going to make ES 2026 if it's ready. But what you'll see here is that it actually takes quite a long time for these features to be added in, but that's by design. For a feature to become part of the spec, it must go through five different stages. Stage zero, the straw person or straw man stage, is the least structured, all the way up to stage four when something is finalized. So straw man or straw person is just a free form way of submitting ideas. There's not much pressure. There aren't many rules about what you must include, what the proposal looks like. It's just a starting point. 
Then we move to stage one. Stage one is a much more formalized proposal, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. A champion must be identified. A champion needs to be a member of TC39. Then the proposal must also include examples, uh, how it should work in API, polyfills when needed, demos, and when TC39, if and when they accept a proposal for stage one, so they promote it from stage zero to one, it shows its willingness to discuss the proposal. But it does not mean in any way that the feature is set to be included. It's not a guarantee or a promise. Then we get to stage two, and this is where the spec starts to be written. So whoever is making this proposal, trying to make this change, needs to write a whole bunch of text, the details that will go into the spec, the language that should be there. And if a feature makes it to stage two, it's really, really likely that it's eventually going to be included in the standard. Then we get to stage three. Now it's time for feedback. So different reviewers must sign off on the text written in the spec. And the text is actually really important. Um, you'd be surprised at how much work it takes to refine it and get it down in a clear way without any weird loopholes or any areas of confusion. Then we get to stage four. This is where something is finally finished. It's ready to be included. There must be acceptance tests, which are kind of like unit tests for the implementations. There must be significant practical experience with the implementations. And the ECMAScript spec editor must sign off on the text. So there are tons and tons of steps along the way. And as I already mentioned, a lot of this work is actually not writing code. It's writing the examples, the documentation, and the language that goes into the spec. Now, if you wanna see these features, these different proposals, you can go to the TC39 GitHub page, which is github.com slash TC39. You can see the actual spec, but if you go to proposals right here, you'll see a document that includes stage one and stage zero as separate uh, separate documents, but then we have the active proposals, stage three, stage two, and you can take a look at any of them. It's kind of fun to see. Um, for example, let's look at this one, Nullish Coalescing Operator. If you click on this right here, it actually shows the meeting and the exact notes from when it was proposed and when it was last presented to TC39. So you can see the proposal and the slides. So somebody is making a presentation, they're getting in front of this group at a meeting, and they are making a case for why it should be there, why this feature needs to be included, how it should work, what the grammar is, all of that stuff. And then there's usually a very long, detailed, technical conversation about what's good about the proposal, what the potential issues are, and you might be surprised at how difficult it is to actually get one of these features all the way through. If we take a look at the official proposal repo for this nullish coalescing operator, we can see that if we go to commits, it was originally created, the original draft of this proposal is over two years old, two and a half years by now. And at this point, it's still only in stage three, I believe, just recently it was added to stage three. So it takes a lot of time, but there's good reason for that. There's a great article, blog post written by Aki, Aki Rose, somebody who attended some of these TC39 meetings and had some great thoughts on it. And the main takeaway from why it's so slow is that the committee, the TC39 committee has one goal in mind. When, whenever considering new proposals, the main goal is don't break the web. JavaScript is pretty unique in that it needs to be backwards compatible forever. Previously written websites from 15 years ago or 10 plus years ago still need to work. Unlike other languages like Ruby or Python, where there are versions, you know, Python 2 to Python 3, big change. Python 2 code does not work if you run it with Python 3. That can't happen with JavaScript. Browsers need to work whether you're viewing a, you know, 20 year old website or a six month old website. There can't be things that just don't work anymore. Also, future proofing is another aspect. The committee pays close attention to common usage in the past, even if things aren't common now, but also they want to future-proof things and pay attention to trends and things people are doing now that maybe in the future make sure that new language or features that are being proposed don't conflict with something that could happen in the future. And then you get this extra complication that it really can't ever be changed or deleted. Once the change is made, once something is actually added into the spec, it is there. So let's wrap up by just talking about which features you could expect to be coming to JavaScript sometime soon. And remember that something in stage two means that it will almost certainly be included eventually. So all of these features, which are really not the sexiest things ever, it's like new set methods, decorators is probably the biggest one. Um, I'll likely do a video on these features and actually going into them 
but for now you can see there's a, a pretty solid group that will likely make it through and then we've got these in stage three that are definitely closer but i like to poke around on stage zero and stage one which are included as separate rep uh, repositories or at least a separate page and if you look at stage one there are some fun ones one that i really like and i hope it makes it through is the pipeline operator and the pipeline operator is a really easy way uh, it's just syntactic sugar to basically continue to call different functions on a single argument so here's an example we have a function double say which i believe will duplicate something and then capitalize we want to capitalize that result and then exclaim that whole result using the pipeline operator you could write it this way and it's kind of bold and different um, compared to the way we do it in javascript now but i like it who knows if we'll make it uh, at this point it's stage one which is the really the first step stage zero is really early no no pressure stage one is where things start to get serious and it looks like it was last presented in march 2018 it could just die out but it also has the potential to eventually be incorporated into the spec the last thing i'll add is that i think it can be really beneficial if you take a little bit of time to read over some of the meeting notes especially the more recent tc39 notes anytime there's a new meeting i like to take a look see what the discussions were uh, usually a lot of it goes way over my head, some of the, the details around memory allocation and how certain things are implemented. But then there's a lot of interesting debates that it, they give you a lot of insight into how JavaScript works and why certain decisions are made the way that they are. For example, all of this right here is discussion just about the syntax that should be used for string template literals. So this is an older meeting from 2013. String template literals are now here and we use the backticks, but there was a lot of discussion and this actually never was resolved in this meeting <laughs> and the conversation restarted in multiple subsequent meetings. But it's fascinating, maybe that's a stretch to say fascinating, but it's enlightening to read the discussion and hear people's opinions and nothing will move forward until there is consensus. So sometimes it takes quite a while for everyone to feel comfortable with the proposal. Anyway, I recommend taking a look at the notes. Just keep in mind, a lot of it is pretty intense stuff that the average JavaScript developer might be overwhelmed by. And then lastly, the most important thing that I promised I would do is give you an update on my chickens. Well, big news this week. I know I have at least one more rooster, so that makes two out of four. Uh, so now I have to get rid of one. This is Butters, who I thought was a hen this whole time. Well, it's currently 4 p.m. <coughs> uh, come on.